Hello and welcome back to our video on wastewater and water treatment equipment. In this video, we will take a closer look at how wastewater is treated and the different stages involved in the treatment process. The wastewater treatment process consists of several distinct stages, each playing a crucial role in purifying the wastewater before it is released back into nature. Let's delve into these stages. The first step in the wastewater treatment process is the pump station. Wastewater is collected from homes and industries through a network of pipes and pumped to the treatment plant. The key elements of every pump station include a wet well, pumps, valve chamber, and other equipment that can be detailed in another video if you're interested. The second step in the process is the use of bar screens. Wastewater passes through screens that are designed to remove large items such as plastics, paper, and other debris. This prevents these items from entering the treatment process and causing blockages or damage to the equipment. Wastewater treatment screens can be broadly classified into three categories, coarse, fine, and micro. The choice of the screen category depends on the types of water, sludge, and treatment selected. Each category includes various types of screening methods. The classification of screens is determined by the size of the screening openings and other mechanical characteristics, such as whether they are automatically or manually cleaned. The third step involves grit and sludge removal. It is a very important step in wastewater treatment plant. In this stage, the wastewater flows into sedimentation tanks where heavy particles, such as sand and grit, settle to the bottom. The aerated grit trap task is not only to reliably remove the grit from the wastewater flow but also to retain grease to prevent floatable particles from settling or overflowing in downstream treatment systems. The fourth step is primary sedimentation. In this stage, the wastewater is transferred to large tanks where suspended solids and organic matter settle to the bottom due to gravity. The settled solids are called primary sludge and are removed for further treatment, while the partially clarified wastewater moves on to the next stage. Primary sedimentation tanks also contain equipment that is used to remove floating solids and greases from the surface. Two common types of sedimentation basins have been commonly used in wastewater treatment plants, rectangular and circular configurations. The fifth step involves aeration and biological reduction. In this stage, the wastewater is mixed with air and introduced to biological treatment units, such as activated sludge or trickling filters. Microorganisms in these units break down organic matter, converting it into harmless byproducts. This process reduces the pollutant levels in the wastewater. Agitators play a crucial role in the effective operation of anoxic tanks in wastewater treatment plants. The agitator's primary function is to ensure proper mixing of wastewater and oxygen within the tank, which helps to remove pollutants and improve water quality. Aeration can be in surface or diffused. Surface aeration is best in shallow water applications or when large amounts of oxygen are needed immediately. Surface aerators simultaneously perform these three functions of introducing oxygen, mixing effluent slash sludge and maintaining in suspension. Diffused aeration systems use pressurized air released through diffusers near the bottom of the tank. Efficiency is directly related to the size of the air bubbles produced. Fine bubble systems have a higher efficiency. The diffused air system has an air booster to produce large volumes of low pressure, 5 to 10 psi, air. The sixth step is final sedimentation. The secondary clarifier is an essential component of a wastewater treatment plant, playing a crucial role in the removal of suspended solids from the treated water before it is discharged. Comprising several key parts, 
the secondary clarifier ensures efficient solid liquid separation. The wastewater enters the clarifier through the inlet, where it is distributed evenly across the settling zone. Within this zone, the velocity of the water decreases, allowing the suspended particles to settle down. The settled solids are then collected by a sludge collection mechanism, which typically consists of rotating arms or scrapers that slowly move across the bottom of the clarifier, gathering the accumulated sludge. To ensure the clarified water exits the clarifier without any solids, effluent weirs are positioned near the top. These weirs allow the clarified water to overflow and be directed out of the clarifier while preventing settled solids from being carried over into the effluent stream. The skimmer, located on the surface of the secondary clarifier, is equipped with a drive platform that moves along the length of the clarifier, collecting floating materials and scum. The seventh and final step is disinfection. In this stage, the clarified wastewater is treated with disinfectants, such as chlorine or ultraviolet light, to kill any remaining harmful microorganisms. This ensures that the water is safe to be discharged into the environment. The ultraviolet radiation is produced by low or medium pressure mercury vapor lamps with quartz sleeves. The bactericidal role of solar ultraviolet light has the following advantages 1. Shorter time required for pathogen inactivation. 2. Absence of byproducts. 3. Wide range of pathogens targeted. There are two types of systems used for UV disinfection in wastewater treatment closed and open reactor. The chlorination method utilizes various forms of chlorine to disinfect treated wastewater. Chlorine compounds function by oxidizing the cellular material of microbes. This oxidation weakens the cell membrane, allowing chlorine to enter the cell. As a result, different types of equipment are employed for wastewater disinfection. Sludge treatment is the process of managing and handling the residual sludge that accumulates during wastewater treatment. It involves various techniques and equipment to reduce the volume, stabilize the sludge, and potentially transform it into useful byproducts. Let's take a closer look at some of the key equipment used in sludge treatment. First up, we have the sludge storage tank. This large tank is designed to store the excess sludge temporarily. It allows for settling and separation of any remaining water from the sludge, which helps to further concentrate the solids before further treatment. Next, we have the filter press. This equipment is used to dewater the sludge by applying mechanical pressure. The sludge is pumped into the filter press, and as the plates come together, excess water is forced out through the filter cloth, resulting in a cake-like sludge with a higher solids content. Moving on, we have another equipment for dewatering the sludge, which is the centrifuge. This high-speed spinning device utilizes centrifugal force to separate the water from the sludge. The sludge is introduced into the centrifuge, and as it rapidly rotates, the denser solids settle at the bottom, while the water is discharged. The resulting dewatered sludge can then undergo further processing or be appropriately disposed of. Lastly, we have a simple yet effective method called the drying bed for sludge dewatering. In this approach, the sludge is evenly spread over a porous bed or table, allowing the water to naturally drain out over time. As the sludge gradually dries, it forms a solid crust that can be easily removed and subjected to further processing or disposal. And there you have it, the seven steps of the wastewater treatment process and sludge treatment process. By following these steps, we can ensure that our wastewater is properly treated and we play our part in protecting the environment. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below to let me know which step you would like me to present in my next video. If you found this video interesting, please like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative content. See you soon. Goodbye and take care.